Jay Ellis is best known for his role as Lawrence in the hit HBO series Insecure, but now he adds author to the list of his accomplishments. Ellis recently released his debut memoir, Did Everyone Have an Imaginary Friend or Just Me? Adventures of Boyhood. In this candid and heartwarming book, he shares his childhood experiences and a profound impact they had on shaping the man he is today. Ellis sits down with The Observer to talk about the journey of writing his book. Okay, so we're just gonna get right into yeah. it. I hear you have an imaginary friend. Uh, I, I had an imaginary friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did as a kid. Okay. Uh, but I do say, like in the book, and I kind of talked about this as I've been on this tour, is that like you know your imagination is something that sticks with you your whole life. Yeah. So like. My imaginary friend showed up in that way in my life when I was a kid, but clearly my imagination is still running. So that creativity is still very much a part of my life. Yeah, explain to me a little bit about the book. Yeah. Um, and what I know is all about your life, yeah. but how did this imaginary friend come about? All, all yeah, I mean, the book is really this collection of stories through my childhood, really from like four and a half, five years old to probably about 16 years old. And I tell all these stories about how, you know, in a moment of like fear and panic and kind of chaos of moving around uh, so much because my dad was in the Air Force and I was the only child, I, my mind created this imaginary friend to kind of like be my companion and my big brother and take me uh, places and make me try things and also protect me and uh, make me feel safe at times. And, uh, you know, through all of these stories, my hope is that you understand why I had an imaginary friend, why kids have imaginary friends. Um, but also when that kind of creativity and that imagination leaves us and we're just out here in a real world, mm -hmm. um, what that can do to you as well. Yeah. What was maybe one of the most difficult or like most amazing moments of writing this book? Uh, being done was amazing. Um, <laughs> Being course. done was amazing. Of course. Um, no, I say difficult is like, I think the whole book to some degree is difficult because, you know, I'm writing about friends, I'm writing about family. There's so much memory recall. And then I have to call, you know, my mom or my cousins or grandma, and like ask them to make sure that stories were right and that I remember all the pieces of the stories. Um, I think also trying to honor folks who are no longer here, who had a big impact on my life. Uh, making sure I, I honor them in a way that like isn't just using their story just for my own story, but like honors who they were as a person as well. I think that was also something that I wanted to at least wanted to protect and be sure of as I went through the process. Why was it important to write this book? Um, it's funny, like I, I don't know that I knew that until the very, very end, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. But I, I started this whole thing of like, a, why did I have an imaginary friend? But then B, like I, I really started writing all these stories because I wanted to be able to like talk to my kids about my grandpa or their great grandpa or my grandma or living in Sacramento and driving to Stockton every single weekend or living in Austin or in Oklahoma or wherever it was. I really wanted to be able to like kind of tell them where they come from through me via, via my story and the people who were in their life and who made me the father that I ultimately am to them. Um, but then when I got finished with it, what I realized is like it was a book about like really trying to tap back into like my own imagination and my own creativity and my own sense of play. Because we lose that as we become adults, like the light world is so serious and right now is on fire in so many ways. But we lose that sense of um, that thing that kind of drives us and it makes us wonder and it makes us believe and it makes us curious. Yeah. yeah. You lived in Sacramento for how long? Yeah. I would go back and forth to Sacramento every summer. My, my parents graduated from high school here. Okay. Uh, my mom graduated from Highlands. My dad, I'm sorry, my, my dad graduated from North High, from Highland. Uh, my mom graduated from, um, oh my gosh, I could see her school right now. You can see it. It's a, it's a thing. Uh, uh, and I literally <laughs> just said, it, it's going to drive me Foothill. Foot my mom okay. graduated from Foothill okay. and I spent my summers coming here. Both my, my grandparents were here. So I spent my summers here for like six years, seven years. What did you know about the Observer while you were here? Uh, no, nah, I was too young to know about the Observer when I was you here. You never know. I wasn't like, doing nothing. Just, you know, kids start to <laughs> develop oh earlier than others, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So we talked about the book. Yeah. And you know I got audience questions. One person says, what's your next career move and why are you so sexy? <laughs> yeah. That's not me. That's the audience. The audience acts that. My next career move, <laughs> honestly, is really just like focusing on this book and putting this book out in the world and, mm -hmm. and getting people to read these stories. And, you know, it's fun to be able to go to so many cities and like meet people and talk to people and hear about their imaginary friends or their kids or their, their, their brothers or their sister's imaginary friend. And how imagination or creativity has like played a role in their life. 
Um, the sexy thing, I mean, you got to ask my mom about that. I, I, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You got to ask my mom about that. No, I'm just, you know, you know. I know a thing or two about nah, that. Nah, so, nah, yeah. nah. <laughs> okay, okay. So we're going to do a quick rapid fire, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Insecure or Game of Thrones? Insecure. <laughs> HBO or Netflix? HBO. Okay. <laughs> Easter's Mirror Raps or Molly's Therapy Sessions? Ooh, ooh that's a tough one. Yeah. I'm going to go with Issa's mirror wraps. Why? Because Molly was fighting it the whole time. <laughs> it wasn't until she was like all the way at the bottom. She went through it, ran away from it, and then she had to go all the way to the bottom to come back up, which is a journey. Yeah. It's a journey. Yeah. But I enjoyed Issa's mirror wraps a little more. Yeah. yeah. You or Nathan? Lawrence or Nathan? Sorry. Yeah. Come on, man. This ain't even real. Who? I'm just saying. Who is the other name? Okay. You don't know now? All right. Come whatever. on. Whatever. That's, not even, that's not even real. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence but you know the audience wanted wanted Nathan. The, the audience don't know what they want. <laughs> Last, okay, um, Apple Music or Spotify? Spotify. Why? What you mean Spotify? I was Why? an early adopter and it's just easy. I know how to use it. I'm getting in, I get out, like, it's a, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Apple ain't gonna give you no more. Uh, no coins. No coins. Okay, okay, last one. Kamala or Trump? I don't understand this question. I took but answer it. I, I'm confused. Kamala or Trump? Who you you do for? realize that I have done, I have done Listen, numerous events for the vice president care. all across we the country. We need to go on record. Kamala or Trump? The record is done. I've already done numerous events for the vice president all across this country. Okay. All you have Kamala, to say is like, it's not even a question. You to... <laughs> you, my record is there. I posted <laughs> up events with her. I done been to her house. We just wanted to go on record, Kamala. It's not even him. a question. It's not a question. So for him, it's not a question. President elect. I'm going to say it. President elect. Kamala here. Excellent. Thank you. Something you have a question. Although somebody have a question. Uh, I would take a uh, flying a jet is a pretty special thing. I love flying. A mo I love driving a motorcycle actually, but but flying a jet is a, you know, it's, it's a very small group of people who can say they've done that, and that experience is the same. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you guys.